bitch. Welcome. Welcome to a Caesaroli Pizzeria. And I'm your new boss. Radica O'Callaghan Andalini Rafael Cortez Assis is my name. It's a pleasure to meet you, honey. Welcome. Although, let's get one thing straight here. That name is just way too fucking long. It's way too fucking long. And it's kind of douchey. And if I make you address me by my full name, it'd be kind of douchey of me to make you do that, you know? It, well, not kind of. It is douchey, you know? So, so just call me Rodica. No formalities. Just call me Rodica. You know? Just call me Rodica. And with this album, I so graciously named the Acesaroli Pizza Pizza Master Training Album, a name of which I thought of on the toilet seat one morning. You will learn everything. Everything that you will need to know in order to work at my pizzeria. A Cesaroli Pizzeria, the most prestigious pizza Italian joint in Pennsylvania. Period. Hands down, period. Nothing else compares. Nothing. Do you have any idea how lucky you are? How privileged you are to work at my pizzeria? Extremely. You're extremely privileged. Yeah, that's right. Extremely. The moon goddess has blessed you, and you didn't even realize it yet, bitch. Well, now you do. Do you have what it takes to work at my pizzeria? You better. You better, bitch. You better. Now, if for some reason you don't think that you have what it takes, if you think you can't handle it, uh, first off, stop listening to this. Uh, go to the nearest corner. Go to the nearest corner. And, uh, cry yourself to sleep forever or something, because clearly, you're a loser. You're a deadbeat sped loser who doesn't deserve to work at my pizzeria, so just don't work at my pizzeria. It's that fucking simple. It's that fucking simple, honey. Now, if you think you have what it takes to work at my pizzeria, if you think you have what it takes to work at a Cesaroli pizzeria, then keep listening. I'll make you wish you didn't. Or maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm not you. Now, anyways, you're probably wondering who the hell I am. So, I'll go into that in detail for you. So, as I said earlier, I'm Radhika Aziz. I'm about 30 years old. I'm part Italian, part Celtic, part Dominican, part American, part Samoan, part Hawaiian, part Brazilian, and part Asian. I'm telling you, I'm a minority rainbow. I'm a fucking rainbow, I tell you. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what part of Asia I'm from, or where my ancestors are from. I'm just gonna say that I'm part Asian, you know? Just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna say that I'm part Asian. I don't, ha I don't have squinty eyes, my eyes aren't hazel, and I don't have an Asian accent or anything like that. Like, let's say, let's say that you, let's say that we're in a park or something. You see me in the park, and for some reason, you have the audacity to punch me in the shoulder and attempt to be malicious towards me. Or let's say if I catch you staring at my chest or something. You know, if I catch you being a pervert. You know, a pervert desu. I'm not gonna say to you, oh, I'm so Asian. Stop punching my arm. I'm so Asian. Stop staring at my chichis, I'm so Asian. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not. Listen to me, bitch. If you attempt to punch my shoulder to be malicious towards me, I will immediately grab you by the ear. I will drag you on the floor by the ear to the nearest brick wall that I can find. Then I will smash your face onto the nearest brick wall face first with the ear and I will put you to fucking bed. Your face will go splat, and I will not feel sorry for you, period. Hands down, period. Now, if I catch you staring at my tits, I'm just gonna give you a nasty look while you go away. At least until you go away, or I do. However, if I notice that you follow me afterwards, if I notice that you're following me afterwards, I'm just gonna throw a knife at your shoulder. I'll throw a little knife at my shoulder. I always carry Swiss Army knife everywhere that I go. I'll just throw that onto your fucking shoulder. It will splice through. Then the same events that would follow if you were to punch me on the goddamn shoulder would take place in this situation. 
Bottom line, unless if we're joking around, don't punch me in the shoulder. And unless if you're, f you know, my fucking fiance, you know, my future wife or anything like that, don't stare at my boobies. Just don't do it. Just don't. If you're a female, stare at your own tits. If you're a dude, grow man boobs or something and stare at those. Don't stare at my boobies. Just don't. That's just fucking weird. But anyways, I'm a 30-year-old woman who is part too many races. You know, like I said, you know, I'm a minority rainbow, for Christ's sake. Uh, one thing that you'll find about me is this. I take my health very seriously. Mind, body, and soul. And I mean very fucking seriously. I don't play around. I meditate every morning. I work out twice a day, every day. Including daily Jeet Kune Do classes and daily yoga classes. Okay, well, they're not exactly daily. The yoga classes are, you know, every other day or something like that. You know, one Monday, one's Monday, one's Wednesday. You, you get the picture. You get the picture. To be blunt, I'm a pretty healthy woman. I consider myself to be a pretty healthy woman. I'm 6'2", 185 pounds. Um, I have D-cup sized breasts. Yeah, you get the picture. You, you, get what I'm, you get what I'm getting at. I'm a pretty healthy woman. Now, I've dabbled in the art of pizza for about 15 years. Uh, I'm a, I'm a pizza, I'm a bona fide pizza master myself. For over 15 years, I've dedicated also myself to the art of witchcraft for over 20 years. I'm a Wiccan high priestess of my own coven, the coven of the Moon Magisters, and that coven has been successful for over 10 long years. And I'm kind of a leader on the side of a certain crime organization that operates through Emmaus Allentown in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. But that, that I won't go through into just yet. You'll learn more about that over time, honey. Once you're ready. And once you really get into this, you know, and you will. But anyways, uh, you thirsty? Uh, you want a Sprite Cranberry? Nah, you don't, you don't want that. Uh, do you want a Black Cherry Vanilla, uh, Sparkling Water? No, 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 you don't want that. Now, oh wait, that's right. I almost forgot. You don't drink fucking water. Well, maybe you should. You know, you're gonna be working in a very busy work environment anyways. You know, you're gonna need the energy, Poppy, believe me. Besides, you <laughs> I shouldn't even have to tell you this. Water is essential for you. Everyone should be drinking it. You know, we're partly made of water, for Christ's sake. I, sh I shouldn't have to tell you this. I really shouldn't. I don't need you passing out on me, you hear? Okay? So, you should be drinking water. Okay? Don't drink soda. Drink water. You can drink soda occasionally, you know, every now and then. But I expect you to be drinking mostly water because it's good for you, you know? And it hydrates you and it gives you energy. Okay? All right, Poppy? Because if I see you having an energy drink, I'm writing you the fuck up. I don't fucking care. That's fucking disgusting. Okay, Poppy? Good. Now that we got that taken care of, let's start your journey to becoming a bona fide pizza master. The creme de la creme. Well, not, well, let's not go that far just yet. You're just starting. You have a ways to go, honey. You have a ways to go. Bitch. Now, throughout this, you know, me teaching you and stuff, I'm going to be teaching you the philosophies. You know, my philosophies when it comes to pizza. And I'll also be ranting about various stuff in which may or may not have anything to do with pizza. You know, part of working at my pizzeria is you hearing me ranting about stuff each and every day. You know, because I'm a type of person who rants about stuff each and every day, you know. I I'm that angry. So having that tolerance, that definite tolerance um, to me ranting... Is essential if you want to stay sane working at a Caesar Rolly Pizza. If you want to stay sane and if you want to stay sound. You get what I'm saying? And have fun with it. You know, my rants aren't always angry and shit. I can have I can be funny at times. In fact, I'm I'm funny quite a lot of the time, actually. At least <laughs> at least that's, that's what I would like to believe. You know, not that I would even care about whether or not you guys find me funny or not. Whether or not you find me funny or any of the other workers find me funny or not. I mean, I, I don't really care. I mean, I don't mind anything like that. I don't mind. But, uh, yeah, you know what? That ain't the priority. Point is this. I expect you to do your job. But I want you to enjoy working at my pizzeria. I mean, come on. You're not my slave. 
You're my employee. Yes, I'm tough, but I'm not a goddamn asshole. I don't have a fucking whip whipping you like you're a fucking slave or anything like that. I'm not gonna bite your head off, sweetie. I mean, if I get a if if you do something wrong and get angry about it, I'll bite your ankle. But I'm not gonna bite your head off. I'm just not, sweetie. I'm just not. My philosophy is this. If you're not hurting anybody, you're good. You know, if it doesn't harm, do as you will. That's one of the main laws of, of Wicca and all things paganism, all things witchcraft. If you don't, ha if, it, if it doesn't harm, do as you will. Simple as that, you know? For example, I personally don't care if you have your phone out when everything is done. And I mean everything. And if, let's say if there are no customers and everything's clean and all that stuff, if everything's done, if you're on your phone, I don't care because you finished everything. But when a customer comes in, I expect you to put that phone away. Okay, I'm running, we're running a, I'm running a business here, you know. So every, if everything's done, then I don't mind if you have your phone on. Otherwise, I expect you to be busy, you know. Whether if you're making food or restocking product or cleaning, cleaning, cleaning the windows or something, or tables, it matters not to me. If you're not serving customers. You're almost always doing something for the restaurant. That's what it means to work, you know? So in reality, it's rare that you'll ever have the time to have your phone out on the line. It'll be rare. It'll be rare, I tell you. It will be rare. It will be rare. It will be rare. If you suddenly decide, however, to have the gl delusions of grandeur, you know, if you if you suddenly decide to have delusions of grandeur and defy me, well, I'll just tell you this, honey. You take care of me, I take care of you. If you don't take care of me, then I'll really take care of you. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna whack you or anything like that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that. <laughs> I'm not that vicious. Calm down. Unless if it absolutely needs to be done, then maybe. But I reserve to write the write you up. It's real simple. Three strikes and you're out. So don't even try it, Poppy. Just don't. It won't be worth it. Now I could tell you more, but I think it'd be best, you know, if we went on with this. I don't want the, I don't I don't want this track to drag on too long. So anyways, without further ado, let's get started before I stall this any longer than it needs to be. <laughs> forget about it. No, seriously. Forget about it. How to make a lightsaber pizza. This is very, very delicious, I'm telling you. The taste of this pizza is unbelievable, unfathomable before your wildest dreams. Forget about it. You're gonna fucking love it, I'm telling you. Now, I'm gonna walk you through this process of how to make the pizza, okay? I'm gonna do this step by step, all right? You ready, bitch? Of course you're ready. All right, good. Now, uh, whip out your penis. No, you heard me. Whip it out. Come on. Come on. Whip it out. Now, if the off chance you don't have a penis, uh, locate a random stranger nearby, you're, you're in nearby town, who has one, and whip theirs out. The penis should be at least 26 years old, at the max 40 years old. It's very specific, I'm telling you. Very specific. Now, once you're done with all that, the next step is to take a large slump of dough, ready your dough, give it some love, stretch it out. You need to stretch it out as far as you can go. If there's any holes, just, f just rub out the holes, you'll be just fine. Just don't stretch it out too much, because you'll just make holes, and you wouldn't want the holes. Believe me, you wouldn't. Wrap it around the ding-dong like a nice warm blanket. The kind of blanket that Grandma would give you. Yeah, like a nice warm, comfy, Celtic blanket. And then go to your kitchen, bring the penis with you, or I'll be for not, it'll be pointless. Just bring the penis with you, suck it up, bring it with you. Grab a bottle of olive oil and a beaker. Fill it with only a cup of olive oil. No more, no less. Only a cup. Now grab a big glow stick. Preferably... Well, you can do blue, you can do green, you can do red. Let's do red on the theme of the Sith Lord, since they like red. Since they're evil. So, grab a big red glow stick. I know you have one in your home. A big glow stick, which is red. And break the stick in half with your bare hands. And it has to be your bare hands. Or else it'll all be for now. It'll be pointless. Okay, it'll be, it'll be completely and utterly pointless. With your bare hands. You hear me? Your bare hands. 
and mix the red liquid in with your olive oil in the beaker. Dig your hands into it. You want to mix it. Mix it with your hands. Mix them nicely. You want to mix it around until the mixture is smooth and silky. Now take the beaker. What you know with that? Take the beaker with your new mixture and pour it all onto your freshly stretched dough. When you're done pouring, begin to rub it all around. The dough needs to be completely caramelized, or the pizza won't taste right. You see, it will. It will not taste right. Period. Believe me, I tried, and I failed. Caress it. You want to caress it for about ten minutes, no more, no less, no stopping, no breaks. If you see white stuff oozing out, just roll with it. That'll be your cheese. Uh, rub it around with your mixture and caramelize the dough again. I keep emphasizing this. You want to rub it around so that you know it'll infuse with the dough. You want to get the dough love. You want to infuse it with your beautifully crafted mixture. I'm telling you. Do not stop for shit. If you do even for a second, like I said, the pizza won't taste right when it's all said and done. All right? Okay, Poppy? Good, that's what I thought. Now, when you're done and when it's dripping, it's time for the final step before we put your new lightsaber pizza in the oven. Now, for any lightsaber to be faithful, especially the lightsaber pizza, we need light. We need power. Unlimited power. Take a knife from your kitchen while holding a new pizza and proceed to move to the nearest outlet. Jab the outlet as hard as you fucking can until a surge of electricity surges through your body um, or yours and the other person if you use someone else's penis for this. Let the power surge through you until you see the light. That's it. Oh yeah, right, but what about co cooking the pizza in the oven? Well, there's no point. Well, 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 why why would that matter now? You're fucking dead. You offed yourself. You electrocuted yourself. You fucking whacked yourself. I didn't have to do it for you. You whacked yourself. You killed yourself. You committed Sudoku. For no reason at all. It ain't my problem, bitch. You shouldn't have fucking listened to me. Never listen to strangers. Enjoy your pizza. Bitch. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know is this. Pizza is sacred. No matter what, pizza is sacred. Now you're probably gonna ask me. Hey, Radhika, why is pizza so sacred? Why is it so important? I'll tell you. Okay, so imagine you're married to something, right? You're married, you wake up to a nice, beautiful morning, the sun's shining, you look to the side of you, and you see a nice, beautiful wife, or husband, and... You get a nice smile, that nice, beautiful morning smile from your wife or husband. You know, it's the kind of smile that, that perks you up in the morning. You know, it perks you up, makes your day a little bit easier, a little bit better, even though your day hasn't started yet. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna be out with it. Fuck your spouse. No, 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 don't actually fuck your spouse. Listen to me, listen to me, bitch. Listen to me, I meant fuck as in they should fuck off. They do not exist. Period. They are dead to you. In every shape or form, they are dead to you. They do not matter to you. Period. When you work at my pizzeria, the only thing that you should be concerned about is pizza. Pizza, 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 pizza. I don't care if your spouse impregnated your fucking fingernails. If you work at my pizzeria, the most sacred thing in your entire life, past, present, and future, should be the pizzas that you make. Hands down, period. Pizza should be your number one priority. Nothing else is more important than pizza. Pizza is sacred. Sacred, I tell you. S-A-C-R-E-D, sacred. When you work at my pizzeria, everything is pizza. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Now, no pizza is perfect. We as humans are not perfect. Therefore, by default, pizza's not going to be perfect. But if you make them right, if you make them the right way, and if you make it to the best of your ability, 
It'll show with the customer's delightment with every fucking bite. No pizza's perfect, but there's really good pizza. But if you're not fully engrossed and focused on the art of pizza, you're not going to make the pizzas right. You can't. It's impossible. The quality and balance will suffer, and in turn, the pizzas will suffer. And when the pizzas suffer, business suffers. Then a domino effect will happen, leading to a series of unfortunate events with everything going to fucking hell. Everything that you've worked for goes to fucking hell. Everything that I worked for goes to fucking hell. And it'll end with you being buried by me, alive, with your precious anime body pillow and its family. Now, I don't know why your anime body pillow has to have a family. I don't know. I'm not you, you fucking weirdo. Well, if you don't want that to happen, though, listen to me and listen to me carefully. Pizza is the most important thing in the world, in the entirety of existence. Everything should be pizza. Everything. I'm telling you, everything. Did your spouse impregnate your fucking fingernails? No, it was the pizza you made a week ago in my pizzeria. Did your computer get infected with viruses and spyware? Don't be absurd. Your computer got infected by sentient alien mozzarella cheese that you made with your bare hands that is stealing your files and credit card information, social media logins, and social security number to send said stolen information to hackers remotely. Oh, what's that? You got a flat tire? Uh, 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 bullshit. Bullshit. You know damn well, you know all too well that your precious articulately made dough, pressed and provided by you, the newbie, has been flattened by your expensive Lamborghini Veneno. That's worth over three million fucking dollars. How you have that much money, that ain't none of my business. You got pulled over by a copper so suddenly, and the copper says, Hey, beautiful dough. I'm so proud of you. Here's five hundred dollars. Go buy a house. Go buy another house. Go buy a mama house. Another one. <laughs> another one. Pizza should be God to you. God. Goddess. Even. Mother Nature would even agree with me with my standards of pizza. I know. I've met Lady Gaia. We're best friends. I talk to her every day. We're best friends. Best fucking friends. One time we got drunk on New Year's in a fucking Olive Garden. We spent six hours at that Olive Garden talking about how much we love fucking Ant-Man. Of all things. Ant-Man. The main thing that me and Gaia, Mother Gaia, have in common? We love fucking Ant-Man. That's fucking unbelievable. I am one with nature, you see. I am one with the goddess. Are you the goddess? Huh, puppy? Huh? Huh, puppy? Huh? Are you the goddess? Huh, nigga? Are you the goddess, nigga? If you said yes, well, <laughs> wrong. That was a rhetorical question, you stupid Gabon. You are not the goddess. Never were, never will. You know what you will be when you practice hard enough? A bona fide pizza master, of which the world has ever seen, period. Period, I'm telling you. Period. When you work at my pizzeria, the goddess that you will be working with is the goddess of pizza. Radica motherfucking Assis. I am your goddess, Poppy. You will follow my guidance if you want to be a pizza master. And you are gonna like it. Whether you like it or not, you are going to like it. Pizza is sacred and should be treated as such. Otherwise, I'm just gonna fire you. Well, like, fuck your family. Then they're, they're not the priority. Pizza is. Pizza, 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 pizza. All right? Capiche? Okay, good. You're learning. You got a long way to go, but you're learning. On to the next step. Now, I think there's one thing we can agree on. Life's a fucking bitch. Life can be a bitch at times. We all know this. Nothing is more teeth grinding or penny pinching than a bad day. 
you know, whenever you have a bad day, you just want to let out that aggression in any way, shape, or form. Like stabbing trees with a butter knife. Or overpowering your 85-year-old grandparents with a rusty plunger. Or breaking your legs with a hammer after using said hammer to break some 8-year-old kid's pinky toe to oblivion. To a pulp. The point is this, though. We all go through different methods of channeling the negativity from the bad days we experience. Whether it be stabbing yourself with a fluorescent light, or telling a small child to go die in a forest fire. We all have our methods. Life's a bitch. Life's a bitch, no doubt about it. You know what else is a bitch? Constipation. That's right, constipation is a fucking bitch. You know it, I know it, we all know it. Constipation is a fucking bitch. It's a dumpster fire. I know this for a fact because everyone else does. We all go through it, whether you like it or not. No matter how old you are, you'll experience it. At least once in your fucking life, you'll experience it. Whether it's whether you get it through stress or if you ate something that your tummy didn't agree with. We all go through it. I'll give you an example. So let's say you ate a bunch of chimichangas and you flush it all down your pipe with ginger ale or something, right? With ginger ale. You pay, you're playing Super Smash Brothers, you know, for about 20 minutes or so, you know, to let the food digest and all that good stuff. You get your ass handed to you by a god-tier Donkey Kong player while you're playing a shitty Sonic. Yeah, you're a shitty Sonic player. So you lose the game online, you lose the game set, and the pressure starts to build up within your stomach area, and you feel it. Oh, you feel it. Next thing you know, you're on the toilet seat, and you're on porcelain throne. You start to push. You start to push the waist, and it's smooth sailing so far. It's going down smoothly at first. But then the flow starts to slow down. It starts to slow down a bit, you see. The stills get bigger, more harder to push down. It gets more solid. And in some cases, more gunkier than usual. You tense up, you tense your stomach up, and you start to push. 20 seconds in, you realize that your efforts were in fucking vain. They were futile. As the stool's flow of passage slowed down so much to the point of the flow stopping completely. Congratulations! You now have a submarine piece of caca stuck in your fucking anus. It's stuck in there, and no matter how hard you try to push it out by bodily force, it, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work, period. Hands down, period. It would have been more manageable if you didn't forget to restock your fucking toilet paper, if you didn't forget to bring water or prune juice or whatever has fucking fiber or like laxatives or probiotics or something with you into the bathroom beforehand. But alas, <laughs> you forgot. Like this bed you fucking are. You forgot. You realize that there's nothing that you can do to make the situation better for yourself. You cucked yourself. You fucked yourself. Before you know it, you start to get angry. You start screaming like a Dragon Ball character. You start clenching your fists. You start... You start flailing your fucking arms like a fucking, you know, flock of fish or something. And then you start to think about the shit day you had. Because at this point, you've gone batshit crazy. And you've lost all touch with reality. You just said, fuck it, reality. I'm just gonna go batshit fucking crazy. So you start to think about that bad day. Your car broke down when you were three hours late to work because of that car breaking down. Your wallet got robbed by a roaming circus clown. And you got written up by that Jewish boss of yours who didn't understand your situation at all. He only cared about fucking money because he's Jewish. So, so, so he basically said, fuck you. You leave work and you decide to go to the random massage parlor because you wanted a massage. After that long ass fucking bad day, you just want to massage the pain away. You go to a random parlor, you pay about $10 for a massage with a happy ending. Because you're that fucking depressed, you want a happy ending massage. Luckily enough, you find a $10 bill on the floor on the way to the parlor. Because you remember, you know, you know the, the clown took all your money. You didn't take your wallet, but you took your money. Luckily, you find a $10 bill on the floor, on the way to the parlor. 
since you got robbed by that clown earlier, you got flat, you were flat out broke. So you paid for your 30 minute massage with the happy ending, and you prepare yourself. You lie down on the massage table. Now take a wild guess who the chosen masseuse is. Yep, you fucking guessed it. The fucking clown that robbed you earlier of your fucking money. Who had the audacity, the fucking nerve, to redress you, basically. He, he stands you up, he redresses you, he takes you out of the fucking parlor without your massage or happy ending, kidnapping you in his itty bitty clown car, taking you home personally because somehow he knows where the fuck you live. Before the clown throws you out of the car, though, he gives you his own happy ending. His happy ending of his very own. By ironing your fucking forehead to fucking death. Yes! He burned your fucking forehead with a fucking iron. And when the clown was done, he drove off with your fucking wallet. Adding insult to fucking injury. Yeah, he took your wallet this time. Now you're left with nothing. Your credit card, your social security number. Everything's gone. You fucked yourself. And then next thing you know, you eat a few chimichangas, you know, drowning that out with ginger ale. You know, to suppress a depression, getting your ass handed to you in Smash Brothers. And now, here you are. About to give yourself a fucking aneurysm to push a coon and a cop turd stuck up your butt, out of your butt. And not getting anywhere with your efforts. You have an aneurysm. Passing out from said aneurysm. And then you end up going the way Elvis Presley did. You just died. On the fucking toilet. All because you were so blinded by your own negativity that y you let it consume you completely. Now my, me my message to you is this. Don't be that person. Don't be. Please. Life can be a bitch. Constipation is a bitch. No matter how hard you try, you will always be brought down by something. It happens to all of us. You're not special. However, in the words of Rocky Balboa, it doesn't matter how hard you hit. It's about how many times you get hit and keep getting back up. I couldn't have said it better myself. Bottom line, if you know that you're going to be on the shitter for more than 10 minutes, bring a source of fiber or something with you beforehand and restock in your fucking toilet paper. Seriously. It doesn't take that fucking long. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about something that's very strange in nature. I'm talking about the dreaded act of, uh, dipping pizza into milk. Now, I already know a certain somebody that does this already. I already know this. But if you think for one second, for one hot second... That dipping pizza slices into glasses of milk is a good idea? You are officially considered to be, in my eyes, a special needs individual. Yeah, that's right. You're fucking sped. Understand? You should off yourself. You should jump off a cliff with your ankles tied to each other. You should get raped by a horde of kittens or something. If you think for an instant that dipping pizza in milk is a good idea, well, newsflash, honey, it's not. It never was, and it never will. Never, I repeat, never dip pizza in milk. That on its own is a fucking disgrace. It's a disgrace, I'm telling you. If you do it while working... It, I'll tell you right now. If you do it while working with me in a Caesaroli pizzeria, I mean, I won't fire you or write you up or anything like that, but... Listen, just don't let me catch you doing it. Just don't, because if I do, I'm just gonna shame you to oblivion for it until you stop doing it. I don't care, honey. That's fucking racist to the fucking pizza you are eating. Understand me? Not only that you are sped, but you're also a pizza racist. And not a true pizza master in my eyes. You hear me? You listening? You listening very carefully, honey? Huh? Huh, nigga? Huh? You can dip your pizza in cherry blossom flavored arsenic, and I would have less of a problem with you doing that than dipping pizza in milk. Seriously! I hate it that much. The mere thought of it makes me want to punch a small child. I'm serious. It triggers me. Every time I look at someone doing it, I involuntarily shake in anger. Pizza is sacred and should be treated as such. 
Don't you dare soil it by putting liquid dairy in with baked dairy. That's just too much dairy. You trying to get lactose intolerant, buddy? Huh? Pizza is supposed to be a balance. You know how life is supposed to be a balance? You know how there's supposed to be a balance between light and dark? Well, that's like pizza. Pizza is supposed to be a balance. Why ruin the balance like that? Why? 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 Why stoop that low, huh? Why? Are you retarded? Okay, maybe you're not retarded. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I got it. Maybe, just maybe, you're adopted. That would explain this disgusting, disgraceful act you put upon people and yourself. Yeah, I see now. You're fucking adopted. Or maybe you're not adopted. Maybe, just maybe, you're actually an honest-to-goodness lizard. Actually, that explains everything. That explains it all, actually. You are a goddamn reptilian. Like Mark Zuckerberg. And Keanu Reeves. No wonder you're so disgraceful and pompous. Now, do you understand how I act when the topic of pizza dipping and milk comes about? I get crazy and a bit brolic. You wouldn't like me when I'm crazy and a bit brolic. So bottom line, don't dip pizza in milk. Have some respect for God's sake. And if you're doing it now, stop it. Get some help and off yourself off a fucking cliff immediately afterwards, you piece of human swine. And that's all I'm saying about that. Jesus H. Christ. Okay, so let's say you go to a random pizzeria, all right? So so you have a sudden craving for a 16-inch meat lover's pizza with a side of wings or something, you know? And you decide to quench that craving for lunch. So you go in, and you go to the nearest cash register since you don't want to really stay there to eat since you're probably rushing for lunch or something, you know, for work. So you want to take it to go order. Okay, you want to take it to go order. Simple as that. Uh, now, the people that work at that pizzeria, let's be blunt, they have extremely thick accents. You know, thick as a board, thick as a skull, thick as a bowl, thick as a big old booty. You know, a polypulous pair of butt cheeks. Wait a minute, hold on. Is polypulous even a word? Oh well, it is now. Forget about it. Anyways, you tell the cashier your order, and they immediately throw you off. Immediately afterwards, you know, you know, recalling the order in the really polopulously thick accent. Like, 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 like I'll, I'll do this for you. So, so, like, they say it, they say it like this. Hey, puppies, can I get a one or sixteen inch of meat the lover's pizza pie with the side of a buffalo or teriyaki wings? Yeah. They sound so fucking exaggerated, like they're part of some Italian circus or something. And you start to chuckle a little bit because, you know, it sounds funny <laughs> when they exaggerate the accents. And, and it's funny. And it's funny, no doubt about it. Fuck. It's goddamn hilarious. So hilarious, in fact, that it can make you piss yourself. You know, it can make you piss your pants. I've had that happen to me on various occasions. I'm not going to tell you what those occasions are. But I can tell you that those happened to me in various occasions. But that's not the point here. These workers that you've encountered while trying to order some Italian delight were bona fide pizza masters or on their way to becoming bona fide pizza masters. You know why? Simple. They have mastered the art, the bona fide art of saying the word pizza pie. I'm telling you, one of the most important aspects of being a pizza master is mastering the art of saying the word pizza or the phrase pizza pie, you know. Authenticity is key. Along with that comes execution. Now, there are plenty of ways to execute your sayings, you know. It's about how you want to execute it. That part is up to you, sweetie. With, ex with execution, though, comes exaggeration. And when you've gotten all of that down properly, you have officially completed the trifecta of how to say pizza or pizza pie. You can say it... <laughs> you can say it casually, for example. Like this. Hey, guys, can I get a one pizza pie with some fries and a side of gabagool, huh? Now, you sound relaxed. You sound relaxed, you know? You sound natural. And you sound generally authentic, you know? 
saying it in a casual manner, you know, without without going too far, you know. You know, doing it casually is the easiest way to go around it, you know, in my opinion. And you want to sound like, you know, unless if you want to sound like a fucking clown, uh, saying it in a casual manner, it's the easiest way to go around it, you know, at least when you're starting off. And, you know, you won't sound like a fucking clown or anything like that. Now, if you want to sound a bit more exaggerated, not like a clown, but maybe more like a douchebag, if you want to sound a bit more authentic than usual, and if you want to be a bit more offensive to people who are easily offended for no reason at all, period, you could say it like this. Now, pay attention now. Hey, guys, look at I Forget about it. Can I get one fresh out of the oven? No holds barred pizza pie, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the side order of fresh, never frozen fries, with the side of freshly good straight ham, the put from the pork's mouth gabagool, eh? You're probably cringing, and I understand, but you'll get used to it. Now, this level of exaggeration, I'll admit, makes you sound like a douchebag, as I said earlier. You know, the type of person who wears expensive chains around his or her neck, who never wears belts. You know, the type of person who has edgy eye tattoos, you know, on the side of their eyes. You know, like fucking Mike Tyson. I mean, he's not a douchebag, but I'm just saying an example. You know, a lot of douches, you know, they kind of do that to themselves. Looks weird. Uh, you know, the type of people who, you know... <laughs> oh my god. You know, the type of people who think that anyone who is not them are lame and retarded. Now, keep in mind that... With what I call level 2 exaggeration, you'll sound like a douchebag, okay? But we at a Cesaroli Pizzeria, or any competent pizzeria on this goddamn planet, will not judge you. I, well, I'll certainly won't. <laughs> In fact, I'll go along with you and exaggerate with you. It's fucking funny. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, hell yes. Hell my god, hell, hell fucking yes. Now... There is a level beyond level 2 exaggeration. It's even further beyond, honey. It's even further beyond than level 2 exaggeration. Now, when you undergo this legendary level, you will ascend from a bona fide douchebag to a bona fide Italian clown person. And you will be one step closer to mastering the art of how to say pizza or pizza pie. Now, bear in mind... The exaggeration of this level is for people who have utterly mastered the first two levels. You know, misuse of the third level three exaggeration will most likely get you shot or get you ran over by some triggered person in the $20 convertible. You know, use it right, use it properly, and you'll be one step closer, like I said, to being a bona fide pizza master. I'm telling you, with... Mother Gaia as my witness. It's true. Now, you'll probably sound like a racist, but nevertheless, it's true. So, listen carefully. Hey, you puppet the puppet the puppet the puppet the puppet the puppet pizza master, little fucking stick. Can I get you? Can I get from you a puppies, you Italian male and female style lipstick bulldozers? Can I get the one for? Get poop it the pop a pizza pie. Yeah, poop it the pop a peep a pop a pizza pie. Yeah, with some motherfucking fries and a side of a, 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 a buffalo teriyaki wings. Mamma mia! Woohoo! I probably blew your fucking ears out. <laughs> but you see. I basically sounded like Super Mario on ecstasy and alimony. Now, if I heard this from someone else, I would have already been pissing my pants by now, 15 seconds in from hearing him. Just don't go to some random Italian ghetto or go near some SJW group or something like that. Unless if you like being annoyed to death or if you don't like living. Keep this level of exaggeration in check because... It can consume you, and it can destroy you if you let it. Don't abuse it. Do you hear me? Don't abuse it. That's all I'm saying. Now, now that you know the levels, practice them. Practice makes perfect, you know. Find what's most comfortable to you and roll with it, period. Hands down, period. The more you practice something, 
the easier it gets and the more skilled you become in whatever you practice. That's life. Again, it's not about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. You know, in the words of Rocky Balboa. So, you are officially one step closer, one more step closer to becoming a bona fide pizza master. A little exaggeration doesn't hurt. If you don't let it, of course. Forget about it. Oh, <laughs> well, I'll be. I actually never thought you'd make it this far, actually. Impressive. I'm impressed. Seriously, impressive. Excelente. You are now one step closer to being a bona fide pizza master with the completion of this first volume of a Caesar Rolly Pizza Pizza Master Training Album. You are officially deemed by me a level 7 pizza knave. Yeah, you're still a knave, but don't you worry about it, sugar bugger. You're on the right path. I'm so happy that you decided to drop everything important with your life and decided to take this journey with me into the wonderful world of pizza. I'm so proud of you, nigga. I'm serious. But this is only the beginning. What I taught you so far is only the beginning, the tip of the iceberg of your journey. Don't get cocky now. Don't get cocky. This is only going to get harder from here on out. From here on forward, okay? Now, from the time I'm recording this track, I would have already been in work on the next volume of this bona fide pizza training album series. It'll come out, eh, whatever. It'll come out whenever. So, so, so just be patient. It'll come. Now, think of this as your first graduation. You'll have many more if you decide to continue, which I think you will. I mean, come on, don't kid yourself. You sped. You're gonna go far, kid. You're gonna go far. Besides, do you really have anything better to do with your life? You probably do. But do you really? Probably. But are you really sure about that? Are you really sure about that, Booger Bottom? I don't know. I'm not you. So, eh, probably. Anyways, you are now officially qualified and certified by me, the goddess of pizza herself, Radica O'Callaghan, Andalini Rafael Cortez, motherfucking Assis, to take on volume two whenever that comes out. In the meantime, take whatever you have learned thus far and practice, 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 because I guarantee you that it will only go down, go downhill from here. And that's the truth. That is the truth and nothing but the truth. As Goddess is my witness. As Mother Gaia is my witness. This has been Radhika Aziz, your new boss, your new goddess of pizza. Practice on, bitch. Welcome to a Caesaroli Pizzeria. Forget about it.